Uh, I bought a Tapper Cult at the Keeneland September sale and incredibly excited about that purchase. Uh, it was a cult that had plenty of size and scope uh, and carried himself with, with a real presence that, that drew me to him. I bought a Tapper Colt out of Black Coronas at the Fazy Tits in July sale, out of a Curlin mare, big beautiful horse. We're real excited about him coming up in the spring. Tapper standing at Gainesway. Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Saturday, March the 12th. Major Kentucky Derby prep at Tampa Bay Downs on a huge card at Tampa Bay. It's, of course, the grade two $400,000 Tampa Bay Derby. We're going a mile and a 16th. We're going to take a look at this field. Carded as race number 11. Chad Brown's mentioned, Mike, that he might scratch out the impressive maiden winner, the 11 money supply. There's a chance this track might come up wet. Maybe that'll affect the favorite classic Causeway, who looks like the horse to beat. I know Eddie Barker's doing the rain dance with Shipstational. Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, it's supposed to rain there on Saturday. I guess we'll we'll find out um, as time goes on what the track is really like. Um, I'm trying not to get too far ahead of myself here as far as that stuff goes. Uh, money supply sounds like he's not going to run. Um, in addition to that, you know, wet track, he did draw a very difficult post uh, for just his second career start. He's a talented horse, but it's, it seems like we're not going to see him on Saturday. You can download free formulator past performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them, handicap along with us. Our coverage is presented by Gainesway, home of the legendary tap at Sire of not one, not two, not three, four Belmont Stakes winners, including Tap Red, who stands at Gainesway, maybe a chip off the old block. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. Pace Projector. For the Tampa Bay Derby, Classic Causeway is the favorite. Classic Causeway pushed the pace in the Sam F. Davis, and I would assume Classic Causeway is going to try to get forward once again. Yeah, that just feels like it's his best running style at this point, Dan. Um, two back um, at Churchill in the Kentucky Jockey Club. They did try to rate him that day. Um, it wasn't a terrible performance, but it certainly wasn't as good um, as his Sam Davis off the short layoff last time. He ran very well uh, defeating several of these horses in that last race. Isn't the key to this pace, Mike, the nine Chipsational, who really didn't get off to a great start in the Sam F. Davis and then ran on well to be second. That was going to be a lot closer to the pace. I'm not sure how fast it's going to be. I know it's a big field. Yeah, we'll see how fast they go. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm not sure how fast it'll be. It is a big field, though. You could have guys looking for position. Chipsational, listen, he didn't break that great last time, and maybe that, you know, was part of it, Dan. But, you know, let's be honest. He's not a super fast horse early either. Um, he was a good – he was he was good in his sprint races in New York, but he wasn't winning those races with blazing speed. Number one's Grantham, 20-1 to 1 on the morning line for trainer Michael Maker. This horse is a two-turn winner over Polytrack at Turfway Park. Now, a lot of horses got run off their feet in the early going by early voting in the, in the uh, withers over a wet track. This horse stayed on okay to be fourth. He was never going to win that race, but it's not like he was embarrassed. That race was over a wet track. He draws a comfortable inside post. He can get close to the pace. Yeah, I agree with all that stuff. I don't know how good he is, Dan. Um, I can certainly understand wanting to give him another chance out of the withers last time. That pace was just blazing. I mean, this, this pace might be fast. It won't be as fast as the withers pace was, and he was relatively close to it. Um, again, I don't know how good he is, but um, in a race that's sort of, in, at least in my opinion, lacks appealing long shots, he's a little bit appealing. The runner-up, Unoa, of course, came out of the withers. He upset the Rebel at a big price, 84 buyer speed figure. Trademark's the number two, trainer Victoria Oliver. This horse just didn't run very well in the Sam F. Davis. Now, it was his first start off of a short layoff. He did go gate to wire in his prior start at Churchill Downs. I'm assuming Daniel Santana's going to try to get forward here with this horse, but uh, he's tough to like off the last race. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, listen, that was a real test for him, too, in the Sam Davis last time because his prior two wins, he won each of his first two starts uh, after they stretched him out, Dan. Um, but he did it right up on the pace, and they were not going fast in those races. They went a lot faster last time, and this horse just could not cope with it. Um, it just sort of feels like they're going to have to try to do it a different way if he's going to improve. The three is Happy Boy Rocket, an expensive son of Run Happy, who won his second lifetime start for Bill Mott. It was his first race around two turns, his first race with blinkers. Let's watch that mile and a 16th maiden stretch away to Gulfstream Park. Now, remember, short stretch of the mile and a 16th run at Gulfstream, but this horse did some nice things in this race, Mike. The pace, as you see, wasn't very fast. He kind of made a mid-race move into contention and kept on going. Yeah, I agree. And he did all that after getting sort of hung out four wide around the first turn also. Dan, this was a good step forward for this horse, whose career debut going seven actually wasn't that bad. He was super green in that race. 
Um, so I'm not surprised that, that Mott added blinkers for his last start. It seemed like it really helped. The source has upside. Now, he did have Lasix for that race, and of course, will not have Lasix in the Derby prep on Saturday. I think it's really cool. The late, great Giants Causeway only had three foals from his final crop. Two of them are in this race. Classic Causeway, and we'll get to Giant Game a little bit later on. Classic Causeway is, of course, the horse to beat. Let's take a look at the performance in the form of Davis. He was just moving comfortably throughout on the lead, and he beat four of these rivals. He wins the race fairly easily with an 88 buyer speed figure, Mike. I know he hasn't yet run back to that 90 buyer in his career debut, but this horse still has plenty of upside. He does. He ran well in this race, too. Again, it was a nice bounce back for him, too, um, off the Kentucky Jockey Club where they raided him, and he just wasn't quite as good. His Actually, his Breeders' Futurity, his second career start, was an excellent performance from a tough post on a really fast pace. I thought he ran well last time, Dan. He was, you know, I didn't think the pace was that fast, necessarily. There was a horse up there with him who was a bigger price. Classic Causeway was just controlling that race the entire way, though. Um, and then he just kicked away through the stretch. I really liked that performance, and I think he's the horse to beat right back. I see a situation where the five giant game just gets overlooked in the wagering because of his last race running line, the Holy Bull, where he was beaten 24 lengths. He was actually moving pretty well in the backstretch, and then he just stopped. And he has an excuse for that race. He displaced his palate. They gave him a procedure. He should be breathing better for this. And he showed as a two-year-old that he could step a little bit in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Yeah, I'm looking at him that way too, Dan. I liked all of his starts actually um, as a juvenile, including his Breeders' Cup, where I thought he ran an excellent third. He was, pro to me anyway, he ran the second best race in there um, and just happened to finish third. That was a good performance. Obviously, you, ha um, you have to be disappointed with his, his three-year-old debut last time. But as you've already pointed out, he has an excuse. If you um, feel like that's been corrected, this is a horse who could easily rebound in a big way here. I thought he was the most dangerous horse um, for Classic Causeway to have to deal with in here. 10 to 1 on the morning line for Giant Game. The 6 is Golden Glider. This is a son of Ghost Sapper, trained by Mark Cassie. He has won this meet at Tampa Bay around two turns, but he's one of the horses that was one of the also rams in the Sam F. Davis. It was kind of an even performance, and you have to think he's going to have to just take another step forward. It's not out of the question. It's only his fourth lifetime start. He's got to improve a lot, but you're right. He, there's certainly upside here. His first two races were good. Um, you know, going back and looking at the Sam Davis, you know, there were a lot of horses um, who were chasing classic causeway through the stretch out in the clear. This horse never got out into the clear, though, Dan. He was down inside the entire way. He could not get to the outside in the stretch, you know, sort of behind horses. He had to split horses in deep stretch. I mean, it wasn't a terrible trip, uh, but maybe there's a little bit of an excuse there. If you feel like this horse wants to be free running down the outside and maybe he gets that trip this time. I wonder if Luis Saez is going to have the seven strike hard a little bit closer to the pace than this horse was in the Sam F. Davis. He had a tough outside post position that day, and I think that forced the hand of the rider to sort of take back and make one run, and he was running on at the end of that race to finish fourth. His prior effort behind simplification, he was four to five against simplification, the mucho macho man. He was only beaten four lengths that day. Maybe this is kind of an interesting long shot that gets a better trip this time. Yeah, I would like to see them get more aggressive um, in this spot as well. I don't know why he was so far back last time, Dan. Um, the Mucho Macho Man, I actually felt like he ran okay in that race, and that was a race where he could have been forward, but his junior Alvarado did not want to be forward, and they took a hold of this horse out of the chute, let uh, simplification go, and then couldn't catch that horse. I thought that was an underrated performance. Um, he just got sort of a crazy trip and ride last time, um, taken back to less, and then just very, very wide throughout the running. The number eight is Major General. Interesting horse coming off the layoff for trainer Todd Pletcher. He went two for two last year, including the victory in the grade three Iroquois. Now, he was going to compete in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, fresh off of the Iroquois. Eventually, they sent him to the farm and kicked him out. Pletcher is great off layoffs. This horse is going to have to go two turns off of a long layoff, but... I'm not, I think he's going to be a decent enough price because his buyers look like, or consider, they're two-year-old buyers. Yeah, I agree. I, to me, it all came down to price with him, Dan. And I didn't really know what to think uh, as far as how they were going to bet this horse. If he takes money, I really don't want him in here. And I'm not suggesting that he can't win this race. I, I thought he was fine in each of his two starts as a two-year-old. I didn't love him, um, but he certainly did some good things in those races. I, I think he's interesting, but only if, if he gets sort of overlooked in the wagering. I like Chipsational in the Sam F. Davis. It was his first start of the year, and I thought he ran pretty well, uh, considering that I thought he'd be a lot closer to the pace. He just didn't break very well, and he did come with a little bit of a run. He was not threatening the winner, but he was running on at the end. And if this track comes wet, we know that he likes it. I think he'll be closer to the pace. He's just an honest trying runner. 
I agree. I really like this horse. I'm a big fan of his. I thought he ran well in the Sam Davis. Um, the break certainly probably cost him a little bit. Then he just sort of leaned out at the start and bumped the horse to his outside. And, and that was it for him. He wound up way back off the pace in there. I thought he ran fine. Um, I do think he can improve. I still am not sure how I feel about him as a distance horse, Dan, but I'm certainly willing to give him one more shot. Number 10, Belgrade, is the proverbial could be any kind of runner. He won his career debut by open lengths with a 79 buyer speed figure in December. He then went through the auction ring, and he was purchased for $700,000 in January. And we're going to take a look at his first start for Graham Moten. And now winners of one other than sprinting at Tampa Bay. And I thought he did some nice things in this race, Mike. I mean, the pace was not fast for a sprint. We see him on the outside. He's on his left lead. And once he changes over, he grinds this field down. I don't see any reason why he won't stretch out. I agree. He has the pedigree to stretch out for sure. Obviously, you never know until they do it. Uh, but he's certainly bred to stretch out, at least on the bottom of his pedigree. I think he won easier than it looks in that race, Dan. Um, as you mentioned, the pace wasn't fast. He was sort of... Over behind horse on the back stretch, had to take a big hold of him. He could not improve his position at all. He finally had to come wide. And all that, it says bobbled start in the short comment. I thought he stumbled pretty badly at the start of that race to wind up last. Um, his career debut, that was a very impressive one. I don't know if, if you haven't gone back and watched it yet, go back and watch it. He was super impressive winning that day. Money supply, the 11, expected to scratch for trainer Chad Brown. Keep an eye on him down the road because he did win his career debut with a 91 buyer speed figure. But it was a race where I, I questioned the quality of the field and the pace kind of fell apart for him. Agreed. Um, he, you know, listen, he also got bumped pretty hard at the start of that race, though. Um, I, I liked the way that he won it, Dan. Um, and I do think he has talent. But boy, is his pedigree all sprint. Spin wheel completes this field for Rusty Arnold, and I'm assuming they're just going to use the same tactics that resulted in his win at a mile and an eighth in his final start as a two-year-old. He had an outside post that day going two turns. They just dropped him back to last, and he made one run, and he was able to get up. Uh, in the Holy Bull, he didn't threaten, but I have a feeling Gulfstream may not be uh, a kind of track for this horse because he's just a late runner. I agree with that. Uh, really didn't have any chance in the Holy Bull. They just took him back. They saved ground and he was no factor. I could see giving him another chance, Dan, but this is an impossible post for a horse like him. Top pick for the Tampa Bay Derby. Weather is uncertain. We're expecting a little bit of rain. Maybe if it rains, you don't want kickback. If you don't want kickback, you want to be in front. I think Classic Causeway is going to be in front and we'll find out how good he is in the Tampa Bay Derby. Unfortunately, the price is going to be rather unappealing. I am interested in the mock horse, though. I think the three Happy Boy Rocket might be a, a decent overlay in here. You like Giant Game, Mike, and 10 to 1. You can't argue with that price considering the source's accomplishments thus far. Yeah, if you get that price on him, I think that's certainly fair value. Um, you just have to hope that um, whatever procedure they gave him to, to uh, you know, fix the flipped palette, hopefully that it worked, Dan, because this horse was good as a two-year-old. I'm not against Classic Causeway in here, Dan. I just feel like Giant Game has a reasonable chance to beat him if everything if everything is okay with him. Mike's going for the Giants Causeway exacta. 5-4. I'm going to go 4-3. In the Grade 2 Tampa Bay Derby, our coverage presented by Gainesville.